Hi everyone and welcome to this time-lapse version of a very sweet little Boston Terrier in soft pastel. I hope that you enjoy seeing this come together and if you do please do subscribe to me here on YouTube. Check out all of my other playlists for lots of information about soft pastel and then if you want more Check me out on Patreon where you'll get access to my full catalogue of real-time tutorials and lots more. So this is quite a small piece, just 10 by 12 inches, and I'm working on the Sienna colour of pastel matte paper really starting to enjoy working on pastel mat. And for certain projects, it has really become my go-to surface for soft pastel. Between it and the velour paper that I still love to use. And here on my YouTube channel, you can check out lots of informational videos all about those two papers. But for this piece, you could see in my photo reference there at the beginning, it had some things going on in the background and like I quite often do I simplified what I could see whilst still trying to maintain some feel of the room or the surroundings rather than just making the background completely plain. So I'd like to where possible try to create a little bit of the scene or at least the feel of the place where the dog was just to add more to the overall story of the portrait. And that's something that I go into lots and lots of detail on in my Patreon tutorials. Quite a lot of my tutorials are showing people how to create backgrounds and the entire process involved with that as I love to include backgrounds in my portraits. As I said, just adding more to the story and making it more of a painting rather than just a portrait. But for the Boston Terrier himself, such a sweet little dog. I love the expression that these dogs have. And because the photograph came from indoor lighting, quite often that doesn't work out for the best. Quite often I'm advising clients to use nice outdoor natural lighting for their photo references. But there are exceptions to every rule and this is a good example of where indoor lighting actually works beautifully. You get all of those warm reflected colours from around the dog. And you can see that I'm using lots of purples, blue violets and also lots of warm yellow orange tones within, especially within the black areas of the dog. So I do use some pure black in this, but I actually didn't use any pure white at all. So it's, it's all lighter tints, especially light lilac tints and absolutely no pure white. So I've used lilacs and pinks and very subtle light greys that have both yellows and lilacs, um, sort of light tints in those colours. Anything but pure white. And again, that's something that I go into lots of detail on in my longer tutorials. So of course, this is just a speedy time lapse to let you, for fun, see the full build up of the piece. But of course, in my longer tutorials, I go into huge amounts of detail, showing the footage in real time, talking about my process and my colour choices, really explaining every step of the way. And alongside that, I also include actual colour codes popping up as I'm choosing different colours so that you can always see exactly what colour I'm using. Not necessarily so that you can use the exact same colour as me, but so that you can perhaps choose something that's close to what I'm using. 
as it's often quite difficult to see what colour I'm using because the soft pastel sticks themselves tend to get a little bit dusty or grubby as I hold them throughout a painting. So along with the narration and the colour codes, you should get a full picture of what I'm doing and why. And then hopefully be able to take those techniques and apply them to your own work. So that's always my aim with my tutorials. Not necessarily to always give you projects that you can paint along with, although you can do that if you choose, but more so to give you the most important techniques that you will then be able to apply in your own projects. So with the little face done, the body was also quite complicated to work. Again, lots of black and white and both of those colours when you're painting them tend to reflect a lot of the surrounding colours. But at this stage I also had to make the decision of how to deal with the rest of the sheet on which the dog is lying. And when I first started the portrait I wasn't actually going to include all of the stripes on the sheet. And at this stage of the portrait I completely changed my mind and really went for it with the stripes. I just couldn't resist how they helped to describe the flow of the sheet and really show the folds in the fabric nicely and show the weight of the little dog and how he's lying on this surface. So sometimes it's good to simplify certain parts of a background and then other times it's those little details that you choose to include that can really make a portrait something extra special. And I knew as soon as I started to create them that it was the right decision because I just think that it adds so much interest to this surface on which the dog is lying. So I don't always know exactly what I'm going to do when I first start a portrait. Sometimes it's a bit of a work in progress and making decisions as you go. But that's definitely something that I will talk about more in the longer tutorials to come from this piece. So onto that lovely little shiny black body with lots of lilacs and yellows showing the reflected colours. And you can see on the front chest area, which we know is white, but I'm not using any white there. It's all these lighter lilacs, even some light pinks. Really anything but pure white in this piece. And that all really helps to add to that warm inside glow that we get from the photo reference. So if you're struggling with colour, I would definitely recommend a few of my free videos here on YouTube. Be sure to check out some of my playlists as I've put together some series here on YouTube to really help you out if you're just getting started with colour or if you're struggling to see more colour in your photo reference. So I've got lots of help here on subjects like that. So definitely do check out my playlists as there is lots of free content here on my YouTube channel. But as I mentioned at the start, I wouldn't be able to make any of these videos if it wasn't for the support that I get from my patrons over on Patreon. So it's thanks to those guys that I can these days devote so much time to making all of these videos. And I hope that I get to continue to do that and put lots more information out there about soft pastel as I really love this medium and I really love introducing other artists to it. So on the home stretch with this now, those little legs and paws complete, 
now just to create all of those foreground folds in the fabric to really give the dog its weight. And again, just tying it all together using the same colours in the background and the surrounding areas that I've used on the dog himself. But I hope that you've enjoyed seeing this come together. I absolutely loved working on this piece. I love when I get an extremely cute portrait like this to work on. But as well as that, I just really liked the overall feel of the image and knew that it would translate really nicely into a colourful little painting. So thank you very much for watching. Real-time tutorials of this coming very soon on my Patreon channel. But I hope that you will at least subscribe to me here on YouTube and stick around and check out my other videos. Until next time, happy pastling.